Hello everybody, my name is Elash Eisner and welcome to the Canadian Money Talk, the channel about Canadian investing and personal finance. Please like and subscribe. I record two videos per week, so make sure you ring the notification bell to get notified each time one comes out. With the new year coming, I thought I would share some things that I do on December 31st of each year and on January 1st of each year. And I will do the same thing for uh, 2020 and 2021. I'll mention some other things that uh, people do or experts recommend that you do uh, at the beginning of every year. So the first thing on my list is to check the net worth. Uh, as you can see from the graph, it's gone up by about uh, 450,000 this year. So not bad in absolute terms. The next thing I do is I look at the portfolio returns again in absolute or dollar terms. It went up from uh, 2151 to 2846,000. And after removing about 51,000 of US purchases and about uh, 58,000 of Canadian purchases, which were the proceeds from the investment property sale I had mentioned in other videos. And after paying off the line of credit that I used to buy more stocks in March, I'm, a, I'm up about uh, 586,000 in my portfolio. And so reconciling that number versus my net worth, the difference is that the remainder of the investment property, as well as the taxes I owe from the sale, uh, which I also tracked as a negative in my net worth. The next thing I do is I compare uh, my portfolio against my benchmarks. Uh, Qtrade has a nifty tool where you can get a letter grade for your portfolio and uh, I'm doing pretty well because I mostly want performance and some income. I'm also beating the TSX handily in the long term with my stocks, so that's not bad. You should always try to compare your portfolio's performance to the benchmark. It's not good enough just to see if you are uh, up that year or down that year. You want to make sure that you're beating the benchmark. And then the last thing that I do every year uh, at the end of the year is I review the last year's spending. Uh, and I also budget for the next year. The only trouble spot, as you can see, is the taxes for me, which I need to have a chat with my accountant about since they're much higher than he told me. What you would want to do here as well is that if you are way over or way under on one of the items, you can make an adjustment uh, to your budget for next year for that item. The remainder of the video will be uh, mostly things that you are supposed to do or that uh, experts tell you to do, and I'll mention if I actually do them specifically, but I don't necessarily do them at the end of the year or right at the beginning of the year, just uh, around that time. So uh, something that uh, a gentleman in my investing club mentioned is that he waits for January 1st at midnight to invest uh, $6,000 into his TFSA all in one lump sum. You want to do it as early as possible, but you don't really have to do it uh, at the stroke of midnight. And uh, speaking of the TFSA, uh, before December 31st, if you need any cash out of your TFSA, pull it out uh, before the year is up, so that way you'll get the limit back on January 1st when it recycled. So you don't have to wait for a year to get your limit back. The next thing to do before the end of the year is to do any tax loss selling that you're going to do. So this is the selling of investments with unrealized capital losses, which can be used to reduce any capital gains already realized in the year. So sell these now so the transaction settles slash completes by December 29. So you can offset any capital gains this year with those losses, and that way you don't pay any taxes. Uh, the losses can also be applied retroactively to gains realized during the three previous years. Next, make sure that you check your fees. Your brokerage or financial advisor will give you disclosures, uh, sometimes with your tax documents or with your statements, to tell you how much fees you have been charged, whether directly by the brokerage, or through the management expense ratios on the various products that you have. Also, if you are buying RSPs all year, which you really should be, you don't have to do anything now. Otherwise, you should be preparing for the RSP season. 
and you need to buy your RSPs by March 1st, 2021. Also, speaking of RSPs, if your payroll doesn't know about the RSPs you are buying, you need to fill out a T1213 request to reduce tax deductions at source. What this does is it has your payroll department take your RSP purchases into account so they charge you uh, less taxes uh, deducted uh, during your uh, paychecks. This means that you get to use the money the entire year and you don't get a big refund uh, in a year and a bit. So that way you have the money that, uh, uh, that you should uh, right throughout the year, which is a great advantage and you don't give the government a tax-free loan. Make sure you plan your year in taxes. Are you going to sell something? Uh, are you going to, to buy something? Is there going to be any tax implications? Uh, make sure you know what effects uh, especially the sales will have on your taxes for that year. You may consider doing sales uh, at the end of the previous year or wait until the next year to, to sell something. If you think you're going to be making more money next year, try to sell whatever it is you're selling that will have a capital gain uh, this year, rather than waiting uh, to be in a higher tax bracket next year. Just thinking things through and plan a little bit. Also on uh, January 1st, you can start exporting transactions out of your trading or bank accounts for your taxes organizing statements for your accountant even though mine for example wants an extra two weeks before and two weeks after uh, the year uh, in each statement so talk to your accountant if you are using one but the statements uh, are definitely great records that an accountant uh, can use uh, to do your taxes if you're the type who likes to set goals uh, and uh, do new year's resolutions uh, I guess this is the time. So if you're making goals, uh, post them somewhere like I did. Uh, make a plan to invest monthly, for example. And if you're not investing, you should really start now. If you want to save a certain amount by doing something different specifically, um, do those resolutions right now. Most people do general goals like I want to lose weight or I want to be better with money and surprisingly nothing at all comes of it and they just stop trying uh, two weeks into the new year. So that way it's sort of a waste of time. So if you are going to make goals, uh, make sure that they are SMART. So SMART is an acronym standing for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. They become uh, better goals in that you have something specific to aim for and you know when you reach your goal rather than it being kind of generic and nebulous like I had mentioned earlier. And now for the last thing that I do and that you can do uh, sometime early in the new year, probably within the first month, if you do have exchange traded funds or ETFs is that you can find the adjusted cost base after distributions have been made for the previous year. Your uh, bank or whoever uh, administers the ETF will post these. So your ETFs get distributions in the previous calendar year that you will be paying taxes on. So what you need to do is also increase the adjusted cost base on the ETF by the amount of the distribution so you don't pay taxes on the distributions and keep the same adjusted cost base, which would be double taxation. So I hope you found that list of what you should do either before the end of the calendar year or right at the start of the next calendar year useful. These are things that I do uh, regularly on my own and then there's other things that experts suggest that you should review and have a look at. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comments so other viewers can see as well. And if you have any requests on what you would like me to cover in future videos, please put that into the comment section also. Please like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and may you have a profitable day.